When our loved ones die, they merely change energy form. And from this new perspective, they can send us signs to let us know that they're still with us. So let's take a look at several different types of signs that you can begin looking for from your passed away loved ones. Are you ready? Signs are the way that our loved ones get our attention and they just want us to know that they're okay on the other side and that they're still participating in our lives. People often report feeling their loved one around them, feeling their spirit. This is probably one of the most common signs of all. Sometimes the feeling produces goosebumps on your arms or maybe even over your entire body. Some people also report feeling the temperature drop of the room, kind of like what was portrayed in that movie, The Sixth Sense. Our loved ones don't want to frighten us. They just are using whatever means are available to get our attention. And we may feel that our loved ones around us energetically causing the hair to stand on end on our arms in response to this new energy. Sometimes we can feel our loved ones around us, which includes a physical effect within the body, such as a ringing in the ears, that's pretty common. And when that happens, pay special attention. Spirit might actually be sending you a message and using the ringing, for example, to get your attention. Virtually any cessation is possible, even your stomach hurting, hopefully in a good way. <laughs> I've often heard mediums ask a client, if they just got goosebumps and then explain that the soul of their loved one moved through their physical existence at that moment. I have personally experienced the sensation of the hairs inside my left ear standing on end when spirit communicates with me. You may even feel a sensation of a physical touch when your loved one tries to let you know that they are still around you. We are surrounded by electronics and the loved ones in spirit seem to like to play with the electricity and electronics. After all, our loved ones are pure energy now. They are capable of turning the lights on and off, making the phone ring, leaving us a voice message, sending us texts, and even changing our computer screen or freezing it with a special message. Electronics can also be used to send us a double sign, such as changing the radio station to a different one while also playing a particular song just for you. Signs that seem to be favored by many spirits include lights flashing in a room, the power going on and off or just staying off. I shared an example of this in module three, video five, in how your spirit team communicates with you, where the music station suddenly changed and the song Miracles, which had a very deep meaning for me, began playing. Spirits seem to like to send animals and insects, such as butterflies or dragonflies, as signs. They either show up unexpectedly or act uncharacteristically. It seems to be easy for spirit to use a butterfly or a dragonfly as a messenger to get your attention. Birds also seem to be special messengers. It's very interesting. I was doing an interview on a YouTube channel, and I was talking about animal signs, specifically birds. And within three minutes of me saying that a bird hit the window of the person who was interviewing me, the bird was okay, but what a crazy confirmation from spirit that this is how this works. I've heard stories about people getting hawks, doves, cardinals, blue jays. There's probably no limits. When any of these special creatures try to get our attention, it may be a reminder from our loved ones that they are thinking of us too. I read a book about the signs and synchronicities around 9-11 and the cleanup and volunteers at the site of the 9-11 reported an extraordinary amount of butterflies there. There were no flowers and it was like an urban war zone, yet inexplicably there were butterflies. The workers renamed them the souls. Now, I know it might sound funny, but Mark told me through the medium Mariah that he wasn't going to send me any cheesy signs like doves and cardinals. She said he got this mischievous grin on his face and said, how about a beaver? How about if I send her beavers? 
And it seems like he was kidding until I really began seeing them everywhere. I walked by these three ponds daily, and no matter the time of day, I began to see a beaver in the pond almost every time I walked there. I would see a beaver picture on the side of a truck, and one time I went to get a pedicure. I even took a book with me to read, but as I was passing by, I saw a magazine that caught my attention, so I grabbed it, and I sat there, and I was just thumbing through it. And of course, I see a full picture ad with a beaver chewing a piece of wood. And the coincidence for me was that it was Valentine's Day. And I felt like Mark was sending me a happy Valentine's Day message. Feathers are also one of the very common signs for a lot of people. I was told that Mark, my loved one, would be sending me white feathers. And I have a bag full of them that I've collected. Feathers can show up in very strange places. They can also be used with another sign, such as a song, to help you understand what the real message is for you. Before I was told through my medium reading with Mariah that I would be watching for little white feathers from Mark, I had never really noticed feathers before, but that would soon change for me. Feathers seem to be associated with the words love when I find them. I didn't connect them that way until I saw the stories I had written down while writing my book, Science Around You, Love Never Dies. And they seem to be connected many times with the lyrics, I love you, in a song. Perspectives can change the meaning of your sign, making them even more significant than you first thought. Some people find coins, usually pennies or dimes. I think it's really unusual now when people find those as signs since we've gone to such a uh, digital technology and most people use a credit card instead of real cash money or change to pay for things. One person I know has collected a jar full of dimes that he believes are sent by his passed away dad. I myself rarely find money, but my son has amusingly promised that if he goes first, he'll send us hundred dollar bills. <laughs> Sense can absolutely be a sign. And when I published my book, Signs Surround You, I ordered several copies. And the day that they arrived, I excitedly opened them. And my son said he smelled cigarette smoke. And I have a very sensitive nose and I didn't smell anything. But he said it would not go away. And he was actually convinced that it was on my clothing. But then when he got up close and tried to smell it on my clothing, it wasn't there. And later on that, that evening, we were in the car together and we were talking about my book and he said he suddenly smelled cigarette smoke again. And again, I did not smell it. No one who smokes had been in my car. And the irony, of course, is that Mark was a cigarette smoker. We both decided he was using this sign to let us know that he was really happy about the book. And after all, my son had actually designed the cover of the book. Numbers are a recognizable sign, and since numbers are everywhere, they can be used to get our attention on the clock, on signs, on license plates, on receipts. I have a friend who sees the number 513 all the time. It's a date that was very significant to her because her passed away loved one appeared to her in spirit form before her eyes on May 13th, and so she adopted that number as her special sign. She sees it all the time on license plates. She plays it in the lottery. And the irony for me is that when she shared this with me, 513, May 13th is my birthday. <laughs> so I thought that that was a pretty cool connection that that's her special number and we are connected and it's my birthday. I don't see that as a sign, by the way, just her. When my kids were younger, a friend of theirs died at the age of 18, and my son played football with him, and his this boy's football number was 44, and someone had it made into shirts for all of the friends to wear in his memory. And for years and years, my kids would both see that number everywhere, most especially on the clock. Dreams are another common sign. Everyone dreams, but not everyone remembers their dreams. I saw a statistic that said that we forget 60% of a dream within five minutes of waking and 80% within 10 minutes. Dreams from your loved ones, however, 
will feel more real than a regular dream. And often the details can be vividly recalled even years later. These dreams will generally not have that same nonsensical feel that many dreams do. People also report that in dreams, their loved ones looked vibrant, glowing, happy, and the most beautiful that they had ever seen them look, no matter what age they presented themselves as. Spirits have the ability to appear to you as a different age than they were when you last saw them or when they left this earth. If your loved one died at 45, they might appear to you at 25, possibly because that was when they felt the best about themselves. I have even heard of passed away children showing younger versions of themselves. Perhaps that was a time in their life when they felt most happy. Spirits seem to retain the same personality that they had when they were here on earth. Whether they were funny or serious or total smart ass, it doesn't matter. They will make sure that you recognize them in your dreams. Signs are as unique as the spirits you send them. And I was lucky enough to know my great grandpa really, really well. He died at the age of 87 when I was 22 years old. And in his will, he left me this hope chest that was from the early 1900s. And so I had been living here in Arizona for a couple of years. And one day I was baking cookies and I put the cookies on the oven. And for some reason, I felt this draw to go and look at my hope chest. I used to have it displayed in my bedroom, but it wasn't in very good condition. And so it didn't really match my decor. So I relegated it to my closet. So I'm standing there looking at this hope chest and all of a sudden I had this idea that I should refinish it. I mean, it was a really, really strong sensation. And I thought, huh, could I really refinish this hope chest? I've never done anything like that before, but I'm sure I probably could. I went back to check on my cookies. And as I was pulling them out of the oven, I realized the date that day was my great grandfather's birthday, November 9th. Ultimately, I felt like he was asking me to refinish the hope chest and to put it back in its proper space in my bedroom where I would see it and connect with it every day. And I did that. And I'll share this picture of what my hope chest looks like before and after. Your spirit team and passed away loved ones could use any of these signs or even ones that I haven't mentioned. Next, I'll talk about how spirit can combine several different signs to help keep our left logical brain from dismissing them.